I have a confession to make. As a five year long vegan, I am and have always been a very avid eater of oysters. I usually eat them when I'm not able to get my B12 supplements for that day and I eat them right after breakfast. How did that statement make you feel? Because the truth of the matter is that I lied. Oysters are not my food of choice. I remember not even liking them <laughs> and I haven't eaten them since five years, since at least five years. Nonetheless, is there truly something wrong with eating oysters or bivalves, the class that oysters belong to, in the first place? Today you will learn all the irrational points if oysters are actually vegan and if you should eat them or not. Trust me, it's not as easy as you might think and I'll explain it to you in a new and in a different way. Bivalves are an interesting class of animals that have been in existence since over 500 million years. Which means those bad boys are older than dinosaurs and even older than trees. They are literally the beer grills of nature and there's a high chance that these motherfuckers will outlive us all. So first of all, let's have some goddamn respect for those bad boys. The name bivalves was given to that animal class because they essentially have two wolves, two plates around their body which have a similar function as a skeleton, just outside the body. <laughs> what you all learned in a QG video, am I right? Smash the like button. Now you might ask, this plate thing is all cool QG, but do they feel pain now? Patience my man, patience. YouTube doesn't reward short videos. See what matters when it comes to the feeling of pain is a brain, which functions as a processing unit for nervous stimuli. It is our brain is a complex unit which interprets nervous stimuli as painful, not our individual nerve cells. We know this because when people have lesions in the brain or injuries to their spinal cord, they interpret pain differently. People that injure their spinal cord and are not capable of moving their legs anymore usually also do not feel pain in those parts. It's not because the nerve cells were all burned out, it's because the nerve cells or the part of the leg is not, is not able to communicate with our central nervous system anymore. Bivalves, on the other hand, do not have brains. Because most of them live quite sedentary lifestyles. Those lazy f I see, there's no need for a brain if your movement patterns are very limited. And yes, brains can even be contraproductive for an organism because they cost a lot of calories. Meaning maybe some oysters, I focus on oysters now for the sense of simplicity, have even evolved brains over the history of time. But those oysters died off due to starvation. Damn nature, you're scary. What oysters do have, on the other hand, are basic nerve networks and ganglia, which can be possibly classified as pre-stages of a brain. But ganglia and the brain are not the same thing. A brain is different than a cluster of nerve cells or ganglia based on these six attributes. A brain controls the entire body, not just restricted segments. It has functionally specialized parts. It is bilober, meaning it has two hemispheres. A brain has neurons on the surface and axons in the central core. Interneurons, meaning the neurons that just communicate between two neurons, are more numerous than primary motor or primary sensory neurons. There are more multisynaptic circuits than monosynaptic ones meaning the brain is a specialized network involved in controlling an organism, not just a random cluster of nerves. You can think of the brain as an actual CEO of the body, while those nerve clusters in, in bivalves are just some low-level managers with very restricted commanding power. These nerve bundles fulfill basic stuff like operating muscles that are closing the walls and probably control some basic level of sensory organs. So while bivalves are indeed capable of reacting to stimuli due to receptors that measure the pressure around them or chemicals around them, these reactions 
are very likely involuntary. I mean, just take a look at what ganglia does in humans. Ganglia in humans are part of our autonomic involuntary nervous system outside of our central nervous system. While I'm not a neuroscientist, I try to explain this easily. Ganglia seems to only offer one reaction to a certain stimuli, while a brain offers you a multitude of reactions to a certain stimuli. To say that bivalves are capable of suffering or feeling pain because they have the basic ability to, to respond to stimuli would be foolish. What matters is pain sensation and consciousness. And both of those two attributes need a brain as a fundament. Bacteria, for example, are capable to move in certain directions based on different concentrations of certain substances. This is called chemotaxis for the fellow nerds here. The Venus flytrap, for example, is capable of eating insects that land on them based on their hair receptors to classify them as a sentient organism would be foolish. The vegan society defines veganism as a way of living which seeks to exclude, as far as is possible and practical, all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing or any other purpose. So by definition, eating oysters is not vegan as bivalves are classified as animals. But we cannot really speak of exploitation and cruelty if the organism does not have a brain. Conclusion: Basic response to a stimuli should not be the fundament if eating an animal is vegan or not. What should be the fundament is a brain. Because the brain, on the other hand, is the fundament for consciousness and pain sensation. Our actions do not create suffering in the sense of bywalls, because their nerve network is so simple that it doesn't allow any interpretation of that stimuli. So I honestly would not shame a vegan if he decided to eat an oyster now and then. It would be weird because I don't see any need to eat one and they contain dietary cholesterol, but I probably would not see a significant issue. I think we should look into using oysters as food for cats or other carnivorous animals, because using oysters is simply way better than using chickens or cattle for that purpose. Nonetheless, I think bivalves are fascinating creatures and for the same reason as I would not trample over a beautiful flower when I walk down the streets, I also would not eat a beautiful yet less complex being. In my opinion overall, eating bivalves is not unethical but certainly unnecessary for human consumption. The mission of this YouTube channel is to put veganism across the goal line. If you want to help us achieve that, like and subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Let's make food production great again.